The key transformation in the West, according to Elias, comes in the early modern period with a transformation of the nobility. Elias associated that, this process with state formation, since princely courts were arenas where new standards of behaviour were learnt and disseminated. <coughs> Warriors were turned into courtiers. Violent instincts were tamed and suppressed. He followed Weber in arguing that violence is increasingly confined to barracks. The move from expressive violence derived from passion to instrumental violence based on reason is again a signifier of modernity. It was essential, according to Elias, to the creation of civil society and the rise of the West. In Elias's schema, France is very much the model. It was here the word civilité, civility, first began to take on the connotations that the term civilization enjoyed during the Enlightenment. Civility in the 17th century, civilisation in the 18th, denoting an ongoing historical process from barbarism towards a state of perfection through education and refinement. Now today, Elias continues to receive strong support from social scientists as well as historians. The criminologist, uh, Manuel Eisner, um, if I can, there we go, has compiled the most comprehensive set of homicide data yet for Western Europe. You can see from this graph, homicide rates uh, are calculated per homicide per year, per 100,000 population. That's the way in which social scientists do that. <laughs> Um, the data that he's compiled tells us that there's a little change in the long run um, in the age and sex of violent offenders from 1200 to 2000. Homicide has historically been a masculine phenomenon. Killers are overwhelmingly men and their victims are overwhelmingly male. Societies with a high homicide rate are characterised by high rates of male-to-male -male violence. Secondly, According to this graph and Eisen's research, violence has declined significantly in the past six centuries. Rates may have been as high as 20 per 100,000 in the late Middle Ages, dropping to 10 in 1600, and ending in the lowest historically recorded rate of one per 100,000 in the mid-20th century. We are 20, in the West, in England, we're 20 times less violent, according to this graph, than our, our medieval forebears. This leads Eisner to the conclusion that the long-term fall in homicide rates in Western Europe can only be explained by the civilising process. We become more civilised. Now, objections to this uh, can really divide, divide into two camps. One is based on chronology, and the other on, on, real, on local environment. Firstly, uh, I don't know if there, are any, if there are any medieval historians here, but medievalists have long been unhappy with this tag of the childlike Middle Ages. In the light of the horrors of the First World War, Hausinger modified his original views. He rejected Freud's psychology, underlying the role of ritual and particularly chivalry in limiting violence. As a refugee from Nazi Germany, Elias was keen to advertise the merits of aristocratic French civilité, over backward uh, and provincial German bourgeois culture. And French historians have strong patriotic reasons for supporting Elias. More recently, however, the Germans have fought back and they've been at the forefront of attempts to, to rescue the reputation of the Middle Ages as a, a violent and disorderly age. In particular, they've been impressed by the late medieval city's role in pacification. Their claim seems to be supported by the statistics. If you look at this graph carefully, the biggest fall comes not during the early modern period, but in the 15th century. 